You're listening to Steve McKinnon, the new Minister of Labor. He was sworn in just a few minutes ago at Rideau Hall, and he's taking over for Seamus O'Regan, who announced he was stepping down and would not run again in the next election. Let's go back to Rideau Hall, and Steve McKinnon is speaking after being sworn in as Labor Minister. Government is something that must be earned every day, and I detect a, a, a resolve among all of my uh, caucus and cabinet colleagues uh, to continue doing the work as we enter undoubt what will undoubtedly be uh, uh, a productive year, I think, a challenging year. Uh, and if we've learned nothing over the past few weeks is what we assume to be true today in politics is not uh, necessarily going to be true tomorrow. What the f are you talking about? Okay, can you just explain a bit more uh, the approach of, quote, continuing the work? What does that mean? And if it is just continuing the agenda you already had, that was the agenda and the policy priorities that the people of Toronto St. Paul's looked at and said no to. So why is that the winning strategy? Wow, that's, that's a great question. I don't believe for a second that Canadians um, uh, are judging um, uh, dental care, whether it be dental care, whether it be a plan to tackle climate change, whether it be our supports during the pandemic um, uh, in a harsh way. I think that governments have a challenge every day to wake up and continue to offer uh, solutions to Canadians. We will uh, obviously continue to do that. We are very confident in the policies that we've set. We're also very confident that the contrast between our policies and the policies of our opponents uh, is one that we will continue to make and one that Can Canadians, uh, I think, will bring into sharper relief as the uh, year uh, goes on. You know. Um, I've seen a lot of things in my career in politics. I've seen uh, things go up. I've th seen things go down. Uh, the one constant is that things change. What we assume to be true today uh, will not necessarily be true tomorrow. What the f are you talking about? Bonjour, Monsieur McKinnon, Christian Noël de Radio Canada. Oh, Mr. McKinnon, Christian Noël, Radio Canada. When Mr. Trudeau speaks, when you speak, when the uh, council speaks, we always say we'll continue, continue, continue. People who listen to us at home say we want change, we want change, we want change. Isn't this the the moment for the government to change direction? People look for, with the times we're living in, obviously every day we see images on TV, things that are happening that are making us think, hey, this has never happened before. The rate of change is a little bit uh, dizzying for Canadians. But I know that in an election campaign and before an election campaign, uh, people will sit down and will contrast and they will see what are the offers of the different parties and will decide. It's not today that we're going into elections. People will have time to contemplate and consider the political offers in front of them. We are serene that people will judge us positively on all the changes that we've brought into the Canadian government. We are confident and serene with all of the policies that we've adopted. And I know that the Prime Minister will be an excellent salesman of those changes and policies during the year to come. Question. You say we're going to contrast with our adversaries. I imagine you mean Pierre Poliev. He's been leader for two years. You're trying to contrast with him, and people seem to like him more than they like the Liberals and Prime Minister. So how will you, and and will you, you know, um, press on on the gas, or and putting this in the context where when we're discussing and excuse the expression demonization of the adversary with what's happened in the U.S. to to what sense will you have the attitude of pressing on the gas? Answer. I think Canadians are, are are have the right to know the choices in front of them. They know the choices of policies. Do they know 
what we've accomplished together for Canadians and do they know what will be the changes offered by our adversaries. So, yes, I think we need to talk to Canadians more about the choices in front of them. And I know that Canadians have the intelligence and judgment to, um, uh, to judge what is in front of them. And we are serene and very confident that once they do that, we'll be in a good position. Thanks for taking my question. Um, just kind of building off of what my colleagues have already asked, it sounds like you're saying you don't necessarily think there needs to be any major changes. Can you confirm to us that there won't be any major changes coming to policy or cabinet or anything like that? I, uh, what I can confirm is that I'm going to go to work this afternoon as the Minister of Labour and Seniors and give my very best effort on behalf of Canadians uh, in that particular portfolio. I'm a part of a team as well, a team of uh, caucus colleagues that wake up every day and try to do uh, the work for Canadians. That work's going to continue. Uh, we are entering what will be a very uh, challenging year, an interesting year, and a promising year, I think. Uh, and uh, we all have confidence that the Prime Minister will guide us through that, uh, through that year and that we will continue to uh, offer Canadians the solutions that we've been offering them. You've mentioned a, a few times saying that things change and what we assume to be true today will not necessarily be true tomorrow. Can you explain what that means in the context of your government right now? <laughs> well, no. <laughs> what, what, what was the expression? Events, dear boy, uh, events. Uh, the, um, uh, the fact is that in politics, you can plan all you want. Uh, things happen on a daily basis. I think we've seen a lot of them happen uh, all over the world uh, on a daily basis, even as we've entered the summer. Um, and uh, so, of course, governments uh, try to uh, plan, manage, but also deal uh, and have the agility uh, to uh, deal with events as they arise. Uh, and it just seems to me, as I'm sure it seems to all of you, that uh, the, the number of head-spinning events that we've seen uh, over the past few weeks has been, uh, it's been quite remarkable, maybe unprecedented. Bonjour, Monsieur McKinnon, Michel Savard. Hello, Mr. McKinnon, Monsieur Savard, uh, Canadian Press. Would you think Mark Carney would be an additional, uh, useful addition to the government team? I think anybody who's willing to give his talents to the service of Canada, I would recommend. So I recommend anybody to jump. Um, the water is tepid, the water is hot, and we are here working for Canadians. So obviously, if someone uh, with Mr. Carney's uh, pedigree, or and I often meet people who are in this uh, interested by public service, and I encourage them obviously to adhere to our uh, political formation. And yes, you've seen what's happened in the U.S. I'd like to hear your sense of security, and also, do you think it's time for federal ministers have a bodyguard? Um, as a whip, I've had to treat with many files, many incidences. We had an incident with Mark Miller um, the day before yesterday, who, um, to say the least, was troubling. Um, I am... Uh, all my heart goes out to him and his team. There is clearly more uh, threats, more unknown, for me personally, I've never felt um, threatened in Get Snow. I walk around freely and happily in the streets of Get Snow. And therefore, for me, uh, I've experienced that differently. But there is definitely, and, and especially towards women, a higher number of threats and incidents who are, to say the least, troubling. As for the services offered, I know that the Minister of Public Safety regularly looks at this with the RCMP. I know he's very attentive to what is happening and what he observes. And I believe that the answer to all this continues to evolve and will adapt to the changes and incidents. Minister Dylan Robertson from the Canadian Press. Uh, your mandate letter is uh, 2.5 years old at this point. <laughs>